So, there's this dude, right, uh, in America, this was like in 96. He's driving along, he's in like the Soma, a uh, Napa wine region. He's driving along, driving, he's going to see his missus. He's not seen her in ages, right? He's driving down, he's thinking, oh my God, what a beautiful scene there is outside. And he jumps out of his car, he looks out the window, and there's this luscious green burden, like kind of, oh, it's beautiful, absolutely stunning. Anyway, he takes a picture, he gets his camera, he's a bit, he's a bit dab with a camera. So he goes outside and he takes this picture. He goes to see his missus, he goes, oh, look at this picture, it's fantastic. And he's really, really pleased with it, he's double chuffed with it. So he pops it on, you know, it's 96, so it's on the in there, it's not that great, but he puts it out there. And, you know, a few people buy it, he sells it, a few people knock around, I think they do like 50 quid, 90 quid here all there, and try and buy it. And then this other guy turns up. And this guy turns up and goes, I really like that picture. I really, really like that picture. So he goes in and he goes in heavy and says, do you know what? I want that picture. I really, really want to buy it and I want to own it for perpetuity. I want to own it forever. And the guy's like, mm, it's a bit expensive. I'm not just going to hand that over to you. So <clears throat> they, but they, they haggle. They bar, they barter. They go through and eventually change his hands for six figures, six Figures, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars. This photo goes for a photo for under two hundred thousand dollars. And do you know that photo? It's the Windows XP background. Microsoft went on to sell seventeen million copies of Windows XP with that lovely, luscious green background. Uh, I'll be honest. I think he got a bit short-changed. <laughs>
And when we try to present it in NAS, a lot of people think that multimedia on a NAS is presented in this breadcrumb file folder way over DLNA. And it's just not the case anymore. Building your own Netflix with one of these devices is stupendously easy. And with metadata being ripped from the Internet Movie Database and all these different cover art websites and Rotten Tomatoes for the reviews, trailers from online resources, the result is that you can create the slick user interface of Netflix for you and your friends and your family and your nan, apparently. Exactly. Well, <laughs> and not just and not just uh, videos, also uh, audio. You probably got so many mm. audio CDs. You got audio station as well on Snorgy and and then QNAP. So just put all those CDs into your computer or have USB external uh, CD uh, reader yeah. on your NAS and and just rip all those CDs, feed them into a NAS, and uh, that's it. Because even CDs over the age. 10 years, 15 years, they're just going to fade out and they're not going to work anymore. Mm. Put them on a NAS. They're just going to last there for decades. And if you put them on Plex, Plex will scrape the metadata for those albums as well. And that's all included. And again, Plex is free. Unless you're going to use like the Plex Pass for the extra bells and whistles, which a lot of us don't use. Um, you can get away with using that for free. You've already bought the NAS. Make the most of it. Um, f I mean, for me, one of the things I like about NAS, it's probably a little bit more advanced and dare I say, at this end of the table, one of the other cool things you can do is to muck around with virtual machines. For those that aren't aware, VMs are virtual equivalents of physical computers. Now, you still need a keyboard, a mouse, or a monitor, or a remote control, or something to interact with it, but it is a virtual equivalent of a physical computer. Why is it worth playing around with VMs? Whether you want to test out other OSs, whether you want to check updates by cloning your existing computer and testing out a hyper, you know, uh, on a hypervisor and testing out a hypothetical uh, setup there for you. Or you can do stuff where you muck around with Linux. With Linux, you can install things like RetroArch and LaunchBox and turn one of these into not only your backups, but a fully-fledged arcade machine with an HDMI out, keyboard and a mouse, four hours, sofa and a bag of popcorn. There's loads of things you can do um, with virtual machines. And most people associate virtual machines with work not play but i do think virtual machines are incredibly elaborate these days in what you can do with them and the ease with which you can use them have you used um, when's the last time you used a vm um probably last week just for testing out yeah more likely i'm using a, a docker which oh, is of course. similar like virtual machine but it's like um a really compressed version at least just a you know image of mm. an app in a way and then when you look about vms you've got to bear in mind that and again we tried we kind of discussed before this video that we weren't going to mention brands too much, but in some areas of this list, brands have to be called out. And QNAP, on the other hand, these guys probably do the best VMs out there in terms of how you can host them. They've got those three applications. They've got their own container app. They've got their own uh, Ubuntu station application, and they've got their own virtualization station. And all of them have got app centers and VM centers, where instead of finding and sourcing a VM alternatively, you can install a VM on these via containers, via Ubuntu and Linux uh, station, and via virtualization station in about two to three clicks. It downloads the VM for deployment and installs it and sets it up directly from within the box, something that's not available from any other brand. Exactly. So you've got to give them a call out on that. What and else? It, and it gets better. You can actually add a graphics card. Oh, yes. <laughs> so you can boost your virtual machine with a gtx 1050 or something mm. <laughs> or something better obviously Going back to the gaming machine and you can link to lan ports you can link to usb ports you can t virtually connect all those uh, external connectivity to your internal virtual virtual machine turn this into a computer a high-end computer that while it's simultaneously still doing all of those backups it works as a nas Together, it's the hypervisor living with on QTS. But anything else with regards to what people can do? Yeah, definitely. There's uh, other things like, for example, replacing your Google Drive or Dropbox thing. So you can create your own uh, on Synology Drive, something called Drive, or in QNAP it's called QSync. So you have your folder on your uh, PC where you can, whatever files you put in the folder, it's going to be synchronized to your other laptop, another computer, another a phone, a mm. tablet. But a bomb synchronization, what I quite like is a lot of people, when they come to NAS, they come off the back of uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, and stuff like that. And they're used to that user interface and that element of space. And NASes allow you to create your very own Dropbox, your very own Google Drive, that is, you say to like a friend or a colleague or a family, your nan, oh, man, she's getting a lot of name checks. Super dead she is. Super dead. Um, but the... 
Don't laugh. Uh, but, but you can send like a friend. Just go, look, there's your area of space. These are your folders. This is your space with your password, your login to access anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's quite cool to allow friends or family, whether you're going to be selling it and renting that space out, naughty, naughty, or you're going to be that to allowing people to have their own area of space and then using those synchronization tools to back up their devices. Yes, it's all living within the one NAS, but it's quite nice to allow you to kind of host your own Google Drive. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Another thing I think a lot of people can do that's quite fun with their NAS that they never really use, and this is quite a recent one, and you know, I know this is going to divide opinion quite substantially, but you can still plot and farm Chia. It's still an option out there. A number of you have seen your NAS that you're running for 24 seven and you've just gone right, let's do all the backups. What else should it do? It's just sitting there eating up electricity, sitting in the corner of the room. What can I do with my NAS? And one of the popular things right now for people to do is to start knocking out some Chia. They put in some SSDs and then some enterprise level media to create those little plots in the hope that they can strike it lucky and get some Chia coin. If you own a NAS, You've sort of got all of the equipment you need. You just need a lot more space to play around with, and you probably need some parallel SSDs. But the majority of these NASs arrive with ways in which you can do that. And now certain brands have started introducing their own, you know, I'm not going to say first party apps, but QNAP have got their own Chia app. But again, it's third party, so it's in QNAP Club. But the people that are making it are people that make a lot of the apps in that center. So it is getting a lot of support and monitored. And although it's more of a user interface, and not something that makes it any easier in the grand scheme of things. You can tell this big wave of people that are using their NAS and they want to make the most of this big noisy box in the corner yeah. of the room. And now it's a good opportunity because Chia coin uh, value has dropped down to $400. It was around $2,000. So there is actually a good time now to get in because it will probably climb up to... One of the people at this table uh, is actually doing pl mining. Can you tell? No. Um, <laughs> but no, no, it's, I think it's a very good time. Anything else? Uh, yeah, the thing what I'm using usually mostly is for surveillance. So, oh, yeah. So you connect your uh, cameras IP everywhere. cameras, uh, your garage, your front garden, back garden, and whenever there is a movement, or you can set up your own triggers, what happens, you know, and then you get notification on your phone. So when you're away from home, you just see, oh, there's notification, just click, oh, yeah, that's what's happening, it's like a cat crossing or burglar taking your fridge and, <laughs> and things like that <laughs> and you can react. what happened man what happened you can move camera around left right you know if you go to a, a deep move, movement i think cameras. a lot i think a lot of people they know they can use a nas for surveillance but they don't realize the extent to which they can use it one because it's kind of a cart before the horse situation where they've got the nas they've installed the software but they don't have any cameras and they've gone okay and then they walk away but I think a lot of you really should take the time to look at the surveillance software and also the cameras that are supported. There was a time when NASIS first integrated uh, NVR software. Um, you know, this is when Axis owned software, ruled the roost for Enterprise and um, Milestone, stuff like that. But now, not only is the software bundled in with some camera licenses on your NAS systems and the level of control can be done via your browser and there's client apps too, but the cost of the average IP camera is ridiculously low, going as low in some cases as to some OMVIV, O-N-V-I-F, which is a kind of generic support default structure, knocking around for about 30, maybe 40 quid with a tax. You can even use your old mobile phones and turn mobile phones into IP cameras. Can't, you know, phones that are in a drawer, not doing anything. You can even attach USB cameras to some of these devices and then boom, you've got another camera. The surveillance element of a NAS, if it's just going to sit there and do nothing, you might as well take advantage of its surveillance capabilities. I think most users I know that own a NAS either didn't know about the surveillance stuff or they knew about it, but it seemed like a bit of a faff. And I'm really glad that on, in of all of the subjects on these channels that we talked about, that we've really educated people on as much as we can, surveillance has been a big one. But I mean, uh, like for yourself, surveillance, when did you use surveillance immediately when you bought your first NAS? Yeah, yeah, straight away. Uh, because before I was using IP cameras on their own, but it's not very straightforward because then you need to connect to each camera separately. And uh, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even if you want to get some notifications on your phone, you need to set up IP uh, forwarding and then th that opens some dangers to your mm -hmm. internal network. And uh, this, this is not good. Because with Synology, it creates this uh, private tunnel with Synology server. So when you're connecting to your Synology or QNAP or Quick Connect, you go through encrypted channel into your NAS. That, that's how you connect. So it's more secure than um, 
going through your router straight away using port forwarding mm. it's not great and the last thing probably to end this video on you can use it for kind of human innovation you can there's lots of projects out there that you can install in docker form there used to be a lot more apps that did it but now it's the majority of it is in um, docker form that you can run these tools that can be used for science. There's um, Boink and Folding at Home. Those are two of the biggest ones that allow you to install a container on your NAS. So when the NAS isn't being used, the resources that are running idle can then be used for science, human innovation, medical science, breaking down genome, DNA, that sort of thing. And I think it is almost depressing how few people don't know about that one. Given the sheer number of these devices out there in the wild, both in home and business, and the fact that short of the one, things like surveillance, where there's a heavy right action happening, a lot of the time these devices are doing nothing. And that hardware, it's a real shame it's not being used for other things. And do look it up, B-O-I-N-C and folding at home. These are things that you can install on your NAS so that those resources are actually being used for the greater good and the greater of society when you're not using them. And I think that's probably the best thing on this list, but then what can I say, bit of a Boy Scout. But I think that's it. These are a bunch of things that you can do with your NAS other than just using it for general storage. These things are incredibly capable and we have barely scratched the surface. So if you're using a NAS for multiple things right now, so stuff that isn't on this list that you're pretty pleased with, or it was the reason that you were able to tell a mate, do you know what, buy a NAS, it can, whatever that is, do let us know in the comments. Click like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to learn more. And of course, visit us over at the free advice section in the link in the description over at NAS Compares. It is genuinely a free advice section there. It doesn't cost you anything. You chuck in your query, what you need help with in data storage, and two humans, me and Eddie the web guy, will answer your query. It might take us an extra day or so to answer your inquiry. Let's be honest, we've all got lives and it's sunny outside, but we will answer every email. Eddie, have I missed anything? Yeah, like always. Thanks a lot, mate. I'll see you next time.